All right, guys, and now I want to talk about ghost pieces and ghost pawns in chess. So what do they look like? Are they flying pieces that uh, hover over in their white blankets? No, that's not what a ghost piece is and that's not what a ghost pawn is. Uh, basically, you can imagine a ghost piece or a ghost pawn as something you can pretend doesn't exist. So right now, why can pretend that he's not down a pawn? Because that pawn doesn't really count as a pawn for black, right? Uh, he can say, oh, I got all my eight pawns here. So he actually does have all the eight pawns, but, and white only has seven, by the way. But if you look about it, if you, if you think about it, and if you look closely, this double pawns are not only weak, but in the future, they can just be taken. Uh, by the white pieces. Usually ghost pawns are deep in enemy territory, so they can be captured at any time. So the enemy just says, maybe I'll keep you here for now and uh, take you for dessert, you know, take you for when I feel like it, because there are more pressing things at hand, like checkmating that black king with my light square bishop. So uh, ghost pawn mm, is something we can pretend doesn't exist. Now, uh, the good thing about ghost pawns is that even though, you know, they're weak, they still have an advantage over not having a ghost pawn. That advantage is the squares they control. For example, d4 controls uh, e3 and c3, so these two squares. Uh, and if white is not careful, let's say he castles right now, right? Uh, and actually, let's say black plays f6, it's actually black to move here, uh, white castles. And now if black is a good player, he'll think, how can I use my ghost pawn? I know that square on e3 and now the knight's coming all the way from the rim where he's very grim his chances on life are very slim now he's going into the middle into the amazing e3 outpost where he's just gonna be a monster uh with eight tentacles all because of the ghost pawn that doesn't really do anything except control those two squares in a way ghost pawns can also shield the opponent so they can be our friends like for example because of these two pawns right now the white the white bishop is feeling great uh if uh, these pawns didn't exist and this knight didn't exist on d6 then the rooks could have uh, caused a lot of problems and could have uh, attacked the bishop but because these pawns are guarding the bishop then he's safe uh, even if this pawn was over here, it could push the bishop off the diagonal in some cases. But be because the pawns are doubled, now they lost all power of, you know, mobility. They can't move. And they're weak. And they're blocking important diagonals that black could use, perhaps, um, in the future. And the annoying thing about ghost pawns for the uh, person who has them is you can't take them off. Right? Even if you wished you could, you still can't take them off because they're your own pawns. You could take an opponent's pawn, but you can't take your own. So the queen can't take off this pawn even if he wished that he could, which he, uh, the queen probably does. So that's an example of a ghost pawn. I'm going to show you guys another example uh, from the starting position in a real opening called the French Vinever Armenian variation so we're going uh, into the French defense Vinover variation and now our, our the Armenian line is actually bishop a5 where black says I may want to keep my bishop here so these are just theoretical moves you guys don't need to worry about black plays knight e7 making sure he doesn't lose the rook and after something like takes 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 queen takes h7 knight to c6 knight f3 queen c7 bishop f4 we're not in a hurry to take this guy because it's a ghost pawn right we can take it at any point pretty much and we don't really care about it that much uh so after bishop f4 black says bishop d7 i'm gonna take out all my pieces and castle white says maybe i can use the ghost pawn because um i can i can trade off uh, your pawn for it and uh, then it's not gonna be a ghost pawn anymore and i'm actually gonna be up a pawn but black says mm, go ahead and he invites the pawn over and puts the king to b8 which is the best use of ghost pawns in chess when you uh keep the ghost pawn right in front of the head of your king uh, sometimes it can be scary and the pawns can be used as nails, but usually uh, the king is very safe as he is here and uh, white wishes uh, they could take off this white pawn off the board, 
but they can't. <laughs> and so that's why the Rook is never going to have the chance to play uh, rook, rook B1 and <laughs> some checkmating patterns on the uh, B file because of the B7 pawn, which is actually getting in the way. In any end game, the Black King will just come and take it and will be a hero someday because uh, it can even go down in any end game and take these weaknesses. But in the middle game, the uh, B7 pawn is the king's best friend. In many pawn storm positions, you actually want an opponent's pawn to be protecting your king and you invite it over as long as it can't do any real damage. Like if, uh, for example, the queen could ever get here or rook could get here, then this pawn could uh, help out in any attack. But as it is, this pawn is just Black's friend. So now, guys, I want to mention uh, ghost pieces. And what is a ghost piece? It's basically, it's basically a piece that's pinned and lost all its power. So let me set up a position right now, uh, which comes from the Italian opening, also known as the Joko Piano. And right now, Black has a ghost piece on e7. Uh, the, Piece lost all its power, but the good part about ghost pieces, they're not like ghost pawns, they can get better. So if you give the knight some time, the king will castle, and then the knight will go on to uh, have a very successful life, maybe being traded off on e5, or doing some other good things on f5, for example. Um, so the knight is not permanently pinned only temporarily right and white has to hurry if white wants to get to knight and make sure he stays pinned so how does white do it usually they play bishop g5 right and after that as soon as possible after the trade or if there is no trade then white will take then white will want to play rook E, uh, sorry, queen e2 and rook e1 and put so much pressure on the ghost piece that the ghost doesn't know where to go anymore, right? And the ghost can't disappear, so you're probably going to lose the ghost piece on e7. There is no way to protect it anymore. Or you're going to have to uh, sacrifice a piece in order to protect your ghost, um, ghost piece on e7 which is basically lost. And that's actually what happens. So usually after the trade, black plays h6, white plays queen e2, um, black takes, and white says rook e1. Because of all this pressure on the ghost piece, another name for the ghost piece, I call it the punching bag. So it's kind of like yeah, everybody just keeps punching at it, punching at it, one attacker, two attacker, three attacker, poor knight. Uh, I wish there was something we could do for him, and there is. So we actually give away a bishop, just to make sure the ghost piece is saved and just to make sure that uh, it's the king can survive and not get made it because after the ghost piece he was next and then he'll be a ghost very soon. So at least in this uh, variation, black can get the queen out, castle the king and try to prove that the knight is actually a good piece uh, blockading the dangerous white pawn and that uh, black's material advantage, because black has right now seven pawns versus uh, six, uh, the one pawn, probably on the d pile, is going to be a queen someday. So that's what black is trying to prove. So guys, remember, ghost pawns and ghost pieces are things that you can pretend don't exist. You can pretend that knight didn't exist because it has no real attacking power. People think like, ooh, he's covering an important square. No, he's not covering because I can put a queen here and he can't do anything about it. A lot of people think those squares are covered or those squares are defended, but the queen can come in anyways and you can't do anything about it. So imagine that the knight is basically non-existent and just find ways to attack him again and again because he can't run away. He's stuck uh, being pinned against the king.